Ever wondered how to make your paintings go from this to this? Wanted to put more life and dimension into your pieces but didn't know how? Then these painting hacks will help you to develop your skills and see faster improvements in your paintings. Now for this video, I'm going to be talking about hacks relating mainly to gouache or watercolors. Now here we have this sketch that I've already prepared in my sketchbook, which by the way is a hot press paper sketchbook. Now if you're using gouache, you're going to want to use hot press paper. If you're using watercolor, you're going to want to use cold press paper. Now the first hack I'm going to be talking about is to always use an underpainting. Now an underpainting is a thin layer of one color that you're going to put before you put all of your other colors on top. Now what an underpainting essentially does, it, it creates harmony between the colors that you're going to put on top of it. So when it comes to choosing the color for your underpainting, you want to choose a color that will help the next layers pop more. So generally this is like a complementary color or if you're using a photo reference you want to see what are the undertones of the colors in that photo and then use that for your underpainting. So for this photo it has a lot of green and yellowish undertones so that's what I'm going to be using for my underpainting. I'm going to be using a green underpainting and this will help the colors to become to look more vibrant and lifelike and then when you're painting the layers over top of the underpainting little bits of the underpainting will pop through and this will give it that good pop of color that ultimately brings all the rest of the colors together. The next hack I'm going to be talking about is how to layer your paint properly. Now if you're using a medium like gouache or watercolor, you want to layer thin to thick layers. So as we started with the underpainting, we started with a very thin, almost tea-like layer where it's mostly water, very little pigment. But as you build each layer up, and you're going to build multiple layers when you're painting with gouache or watercolor, as you build each layer up, you're going to use more and more pigment and less water. So as you can see here, I'm still working on the underpainting part, but I'm going into where I want to block in the shadows and the dark parts of the painting, and I'm using a not a darker color, but I'm using the same color just with more pigment and less water. So this is technically a second layer of underpainting and so I'm using a thicker layer than I did beneath it. Now the final hack that I'm going to be talking about is when you're painting with a medium like gouache, and this is just for gouache, this does not work for watercolor, the opposite will work for watercolor, is that when you're painting with gouache, you want to work dark to light. So you want to place down your shadows first when you're painting the top layers of the painting. You want to place your shadows and your darker colors first, and then as you go along, you will go into lighter and lighter colors, and then highlights will be last. Now the reason this works for gouache and does not work for watercolor is because gouache is an opaque medium so you can place light colors on top of dark colors and you will be able to see them but with watercolors you cannot place lighter colors on top of darker colors so you always want to work light to dark when you're working with watercolors but since we're working with gouache in this video I am going dark to light so as you can see I'm placing down the darkest shadows in the painting, so those would be shadows underneath the neck, underneath the nose, lips, in the uh, brow bones, as well as the hair. You will see it later, but the hair is going to be quite dark. So now that I've filled in some of my darker colors, I'm going to go into some of my lighter colors, but not my lightest ones. So this would be more of my mid-tones in the face so that's what I'm going in with next and then here I'm going in with my lighter color now one thing you have to remember when working from dark to light is that when you first put down your darker colors they will appear much darker than they will in the final painting and this is because when the darker colors are on their own they tend to appear much darker because they don't really have something to contrast or balance them out so as I'm putting down the lighter tones you can see that the darker colors are starting to appear not as dark as they did before and now this next tip is not so much of a hack as more of a reminder is to trust the process 
when you're painting, and honestly, especially with gouache, I see this in gouache more often, there will be a very ugly stage in your painting. Like there is right now, you can see here, this hardly looks anything like a person, doesn't look anything close to what I wanted it to look like, or what the reference photo looks like. But you have to trust the process because when you're placing down your initial colors, it's gonna, it's gonna look weird at first because it's just shapes and colors at first but this part is very important and will lay down the foundations for the more detailed parts of your painting later so now i'm gonna continue the painting just putting layer on top of layer getting thicker and thicker in the layers as i go and then also putting more detail in each layer as you can see i switched to a smaller brush as i'm putting more detailed areas rather than big blocks of shapes and colors. So you can see here as I layer up, the character starts to look a lot more three-dimensional. Here I'm once again building a thicker layer on top of a previously thinner layer and that's helping to make the color more bold and a lot more three-dimensional and now i'm finishing up by adding a background now this is actually another hack that when you're choosing the background for your painting you want to choose a background that helps your character stand out more now for example i'm using a light peachy almost pinkish tone in the background because my main focus in the painting is made up of a lot of cool undertones like greens and blues and grays so in order to help those pop i want to use a more warmer undertone so i'm going for this sort of orangey pink and you can also kind of you can use color theory for that this is basically color theory because green and blue their opposite colors on the spectrum are uh, reds and oranges so that helps to make the character more prominent and pull out of the painting more now i went ahead and actually changed the background to a similar color but one with more of a pinkish reddish undertone because i felt like the other one was a bit too orange and made the skin kind of look washed out so i like this one a lot better and I feel like it complements the subject a lot more. Now a big thank you to you guys for over 100 subscribers. I can't believe I actually managed to hit that milestone but I'm so grateful for you guys watching and subscribing. Your support means everything. I'm going to be linking it in the description of this video but if you guys want to help support me more you can go check out my Ko-Fi. I started to open commissions on there so if you're looking to buy a piece of artwork from me or commission a piece i have that open and i'll be linking that in the description but thank you guys so much again for 100 subscribers and thank you for watching this video like and subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you guys in the next video